Hello, welcome to part 13 of disassembling a Monroe calculator. Um, sorry about the audio levels from last time. Um, my, um, my audio recorder um, did not record. My fault. Um, but now it should uh, be working fine. So um, when last we left, I was going to look at uh, these pins uh, at the end to see if I could take them out. I'm actually thinking that they are permanent. Um, the reason that I say so is that I looked at them under a microscope and you may be able to see that there are these marks maybe on the sides of these pins here and here. And let's go to the other side and well there are these, these sort of semicircular marks over here. Um, and what I suspect that is, is that they had a, a tool, maybe something like this, and they used it to uh, bang the uh, pin into the hole, which presumably was slightly undersized. So these are uh, basically interference fits, which means that the pin is slightly larger than the hole, which is meant for absolutely permanent fixtures. Um, so I'm suspecting that this is absolutely permanent. So what does that mean for uh, cleaning this up? Um, because as I said, this, uh, this wheel right over here feels really sticky. Um, and uh, it would be nice to sort of clean this. Well, you know, what I could do is I could just take some uh, cleaning fluid and um, just dunk it in. Um, luckily, there aren't any bearings in here. Um, this, this uh, this wheel also is kind of uh, sticky, but it does come out, so I can actually clean that up. Um, so I can probably go ahead and clean this whole thing up with cleaning fluid. Um, so I think we're going to leave this like that. Um, really, the only thing that I wanted to show on the Leibniz wheel is exactly how it worked. So we can see that, and I probably went over this uh, before, but we may as well just go over it again. We have. Um, one section which has five teeth on it and another section which has four teeth on it at different depths. So the idea is that there are these two um, uh, sort of um, surfaces which push the, uh, I'll call this the five wheel, um, either uh, leaves, it, leaves the five wheel in this position or pushes it over into this position. Um, and we have another uh, thing, surface, which pushes the uh, units wheel over either zero, one unit, two units, three units, or four units. And the idea is that if the five gets in line that way, then you can push this over and make six teeth, or push it over again and make seven teeth, eight teeth, and when they're fully together, that's nine teeth. So that when you rotate, you get a varying number of teeth that engages the intermediate gear. So that's basically how that works. So it's important for these things to spring back, of course. Um, and again, these are uh, all kind of sticky. This one seems to, to work pretty well, but this one is still a little sticky. Um, and the easier these are to push, the better the keyboard will work, and the uh, better they go back, um, the less um, stuck digits you'll get. So uh, I really want to clean that up. Um, luckily there are no bearings on here, which I said earlier. Um, the problem with especially sealed bearings is that when you clean them, you also clean out the, um, the lubricant in them and then the bearings don't actually work anymore. So we're going to leave this as is. Um, there really isn't that much to it anymore. So the next thing that we're going to do is take a look at the carry um, section. So this is the, this is the carry uh, axle. Um, it's got, I don't know why they call them dogs, but these are called dogs, um, and they're spring-loaded. And the idea, again, we went over this before, is that um, as this thing turns, um, if uh, a carry is needed, there's a lever that pushes this uh, carry dog in, and then as it rotates, it will turn the digit gear one, and then the next, I guess maybe this thing, will reset that lever um, so that as it keeps turning, the, the carry is no longer set. 
Um, these are fixed gears here at the end. I'm not sure what this is for, and I'm not sure what this is for, and it seems to be spring-loaded as well. Um, unfortunately, these two, uh, this gear and this uh, cam surface over here, this is a cam surface. Uh, there we go. You can see the different radius over there. These are also held in by taper pins. Given the adventure that we had before with taper pins, I'm just going to leave these on. Um, the other end, luckily, is not held on by a taper pin. It is, in fact, held on by a special kind of a nut. So we can see, hopefully, that I can just take this and, well, I can't rotate, but that's what this tool, I think, may be good for. Um, the idea is that um, I made this opening so that it just fits here. Um, let's see. There we go. So I can just hold on to it with this and turn this other side, hopefully without bending anything. Um, that would be tightening it, wouldn't it? So I need to loosen it like this. Hmm. You know, I don't want to wreck the, uh, the spring. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put this here, maybe? This might work. Okay. So here we go. Ow. Okay, that's not working. I may need a uh, I may need a bigger um, bigger lever here. So okay, through the magic of editing, I will go and get a bigger wrench. All right, hello. I have a bigger wrench, a bigger wrench. So we were going to try to remove this nut from the end. So let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna tighten the wrench. There we go. All right, sometimes all you need is a bigger tool. So I can remove this nice little holder that I made. How big is this, um, you may ask? Well, this round stuff here measures out to uh, about 0.696 or so, and this I made uh, 0.75. So there's your answer, three quarters of an inch. Um, actually, it's slightly bigger than three quarters of an inch because I went and smoothed the inside. So um, it fits loosely, um, which is good. Um, and it also makes a nice sort of tuning, tuning fork sound. Okay, so um, I can just remove that. Um, flat spots in the front. So I'm going to start a new bag. I think we're on 14 now. So the good news is that once we take this apart, the only thing that's left to take apart is the carriage. Um, the carriage has something wrong with it. Um, if you rotate it, let me uh, just reset this thing. Okay. So. Uh, if you look at the, the top series of digits, if I rotate it like this, you can see that the top register zeros properly. The same thing is supposed to happen with the bottom register, but it gets stuck. So uh, that's something, that's one thing that we're going to have to look at. The other thing is um, the digit wheels. This is really smooth, 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 smooth. Oh, this is really stuck sort of smooth, stuck, sort of smooth. So obviously that needs to be fixed. Um, so we have smooth, stuck, stuck, smooth. So, you know, these, these digit wheels obviously need, need a really good cleaning. Um, so uh, we will attempt to do that. 
I'm not sure how successful it will be, considering that um, there are many, many taper pins in here. Uh, but we'll take apart what we can and see. Back to the carry mechanism. We've just taken this uh, nut off. So now we are going to take a pen and label bag 14 of 77339. I think that's right, yeah. And stash it in the bag. So I may not take apart the whole thing. I just want to uh, show you some interesting features. Um, here is a uh, washer looking thing, but it has a notch cut out in the end. And the notch is there because this axle has a keyway and a key in it. Um, the key prevents all of these parts from rotating. So I'm going to put this in bag 14. And now we can remove this end piece. And I'm only going to remove the one end piece because once you remove um, one end piece, the other end pieces are pretty much the same except they're more, they're, they're more spread apart. So there's the end piece. Um, it is not symmetrical because as you can see, there is a hole on this side and not one on this side. So it goes on like this and not like this. Uh, okay. Here's a dog. I can pull it out. Um, let me pull out the other one, it seems easier. It's uh, attached with a spring and basically it just fits in there. So that's really all I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, and then there's a spacer. Um, the spacer is basically just a brass um, washer with a, um, with a piece cut out of it to fit in the keyway. And there's the key right over there. So let's go put that back um, because really there's not much of a point in taking this apart. There aren't any moving parts on here except for the dogs. Um, everything else is just a spacer. So this thing is really, really easy to clean and a bit of a pain to put together again. So. Let's see. I have to remember to uh, angle all of these pieces so that the camera can see it. So, I'm trying to put this back together again. It's just being a little bit of a pain. Oh, yeah, okay. It's because the second part. Second part, ah, there we go. Okay, second part is together. First part is almost together. Oops. First part, there we go. Okay, um, so, well, I guess I didn't really need bag 14. So, should go on the keyway and not rotate, good. And then the next part is the nut, which goes on the threads. And now we need to tighten it up. So I'm gonna put my special tool in here to hold on to it. And then I'm going to tighten the nut. Okay, that's all I need. Yeah. Make sure the dogs work. Yep. Well, this one doesn't work because it's a bit loose. There we go. Let me check the other side. Yep. Tighten this up again, just a little bit, just in case. Yeah. Okay, so that's the carry mechanism. 
Um, as to why there is a, uh, a cam surface over here and why uh, there is a gear here that seems to have um, a piece cut out of it and what this thing is for and what this thing is for, uh, we'll find out when we put this thing back together again. Um, so, all right, that was the carry mechanism. So, now that we're done with the carry mechanism, let us go to the final piece of the calculator, the carriage. When we're done with the carriage, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put all the pieces back together, cleaning them as we go along, and lubricating them. So, um, and then hopefully the entire thing should work. So, all right. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, so, um, there's a whole bunch of cams here and other things. It's kind of difficult to, to describe exactly how this works. Um, but, uh, in fact, it's really difficult to describe how this works. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll figure out why uh, this thing isn't um, turning. Well, let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, so I'm pulling on um, a stop. Okay, that doesn't seem to do it. And in fact, it doesn't seem to be anything on this side that is causing the problem. And I'm moving the parts on this end. And it doesn't seem like there's anything stopping this from moving. So I believe it is maybe, maybe it's this middle piece that is preventing it from moving. So we'll take it apart and find out what's going on. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the handle. So we'll start a bag. We'll use uh, bag 14. So I'm going to take the handle off first. And there's just a screw on the end that I can remove. Okay. And uh, this brings me to something interesting about these machines. Let me measure this, this guy first. It is a, is it going to be an 836? It is going to be an 836. And its length is 0.283, bag 14. OK, so so the thing about these handles is that when, when you buy them off of eBay, typically what the people who are um, selling it are going to do is they're going to shove it in a box. And the box is probably going to, and the machine is probably going to end up sitting like this. And in fact, it's going to be sitting on this, uh, this crank and the crank will actually bend inwards. Um, I've seen that on many of these machines. And the solution is to just ask them to unscrew that screw and then remove the crank. Um, it should just come right off, just like that. Just ask them to do that. Put the screw back here so that it doesn't get loose. Um, and then ask them to you know, stick this in a bag or something. Um, same thing with the, uh, the main crank handle. Um, as we saw, there was a little lever that you could pull, and then the crank would just come right off. Ask them to do that so that you don't get these damaged. Um, OK, so I'm just going to put this. Uh, should we take this apart? Yeah, we could. Um, so this thing, it has been chewed by a dog, it looks like. Um, but it can be easily removed. Um, yes, can be easily removed if you have the right screw.
screwdriver. There we go. Okay, it comes right off. That should have been all one piece. And we measure this to be. Looks like it's going to be number 640. Yes, indeed. It is 640. And it measures 0.245. So we'll stick it in bag 14. Now, um, I could probably model this and 3D print it in plastic. So that will replace that. And this thing. So when you get it broken like that, uh, that is a problem. Interestingly enough, I made a 3D model and I had it printed out out of stainless steel from Shapeways. And there is my model and it was printed out and there is the original and they look identical. Um, I made the hole on this slightly uh, too small, um, but it nevertheless, it's still functional. It will still go on. Uh, it will still go on just like that. It will still crank. So I would say that this is perfectly functional. The only thing it's missing are the threads in here for the screw. Um, other than that, um, the little plastic piece does fit perfectly on. So that's pretty nice. Uh, unfortunately, this cost, I think, about $30 to do. Um, but if it's a choice between having a bent crank that doesn't actually work and a new crank, which does actually work, I would use the new crank. Although $30 is a significant portion of what you paid to get this on eBay. So, yeah, maybe you want to try bending it back. Um, the few that I tried bending back, one of them actually broke, so that was uh, a pain. Okay, that's bag 14. Okay, so let's see what else we have to take apart. Um, okay, so there are essentially, effectively, three shafts. Well, four shafts it looks like. One here, one just below it, so one here, one just below it, one top one over here, and then this one. So um, we can't take this one, these wheels out, without taking this one over here. So we're going to try, let me see. Ooh, I see taper pins. Oh, I hate taper pins so much. Um, I hate them so much. So I'm not sure I even want to take uh, the top one out. Um, well, let's see what we can do. OK. So all right, uh, take a close look at these screws. You can see that there's a sort of inner screw. If you turn it over, you can see that there are inner screws here. Those inner screws are actually adjustment screws. They adjust the shafts back and forth because it's important to get these gears in, in line. There's a, a lot of styrofoam in here for some reason. Styrofoam could be a reason that this is failing. So it is important to take this apart and make sure that there is no styrofoam in there. So um, yeah, so the adjustment screws, um, they move the shafts back and forth um, to get them properly aligned. Um, so obviously when we take this apart, uh, we are going to have to figure out how to get that alignment um, correct. So what we're going to do is, let me see, how should we proceed? 
I think I think we might be able to remove this top shaft first. So let's go ahead and try that. Now in order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the adjustment screws. So I'm going to need a, a smaller screwdriver. I think uh, this one's good. Yeah, this one is a good size. So I'm just going to unscrew this. Well, it's kind of tight. But I guess that's OK. You sort of want adjustment screws to be pretty tight. Not so tight that you can't remove them. Hmm. Is this the same? So, uh, sorry about the noise. Uh, this is a working wood uh, machine shop. So, okay, so this is a set screw. And we're just going to see what, what size it is. like it's a quarter of an inch but what is the size of the what is the size of the thread I mean, it's not a quarter of an inch no it definitely is a quarter of an inch huh okay so it's a quarter 28 Size is 0.232. So I uh, appear to have damaged the slot on this one. So I may just want to replace that with a set screw, a modern one. So that'll go in bag 14. Um, I don't need to remove the other adjustment. Now you can see that the shaft actually moves back and forth. That's the effect of the adjustment. Okay, now we need to remove this. Um, this is a uh, this is actually um, kind of a, a bolt, and the nut is on the other side. Now. So I would need to get in there with something really small to, uh, to remove that nut. Um, this wrench isn't going to do it. So I'm going to try with these uh, needle nose pliers to hold on to this and then take a big screwdriver and just try to unscrew it. No. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be working. So what I'm going to have to do is try to find a, uh, um, a smaller crescent wrench, maybe, um, that'll fit that. So um, I will be back. OK, so I'm back. I have a 9 16th crescent wrench. Um, for comparison, here is another 9 16th um, crescent wrench. However, if you look at the sizes, um, I have a very thin one, and apparently you need a thin one because um, it needs to fit right in here, and then you need to turn it. So I'm going to turn it. There we go. I think did that did that actually work, or did it just slip off? 
it just slipped off. Okay. Um, I need to turn this, so. Well, this is a really tight fit. Um, I wonder how they, uh, how they did this. Maybe what I can do is I can take the thick one and just jam it in there. Oh, there it goes. It, is it turning? Yeah, it is actually turning. Okay. Um, so I just need to unscrew it then from the end. There we go. So I'm holding on to the so I'm holding on to the nut and just unscrewing the end piece. Okay, so there's the end piece. Um, it is uh, basically a bolt with, you know, threads on the end, but it's also got a hole in the middle with threads. And uh, this is actually too big to measure. So there we go. And I'm going to try to remove the nut. No. Now that's not coming out because it's stuck on the end of the shaft. So the question is, how do we get the shaft off? Well, there are these... There is this um, arm here, which is attached to the shaft. And there is another arm here, which is attached to the opposite shaft. These are basically stops, and they, uh, they prevent the axle from rotating. They don't prevent the wheels from rotating, but they do prevent the axle from rotating. Um, when you rotate the axle, that zeroes out the wheels. So these, in effect, prevent zeroing. All right, and they lift when the central crank is turned. So there, this thing lifts, and now I can turn this, uh, well, almost all the way. And it's not this that's causing it. So anyway, um, what I need to do is remove the spring from the arms. So let me just take one of these, all right. Now the arm is basically free and I can pull this out. So that's the one side, but it doesn't come all the way out. So we have to examine the other side now. So let's do that. Okay. So here's the other side. So I can lift the shaft, but can I pull on it? No. It looks like there's something in the way. Um, so what's in the way? Well, uh, certainly this central axis appears to be in the way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So there's a, a cam surface here which is being prevented uh, from moving out that way by this piece of metal over here. And this piece of metal, this is about the only, the extent of its movement. Um, it actually seems like I should be able to move this even more. Here's another set of arms. Yeah, so, so when this is in the right position, this also seems to um, prevent the axle from moving. So it looks like um, there are two things in there. Um, but nevertheless, this is still uh, preventing this axle from moving. So it looks like I need to take out um, perhaps simultaneously this other central axle. So let's take a look at doing that. Um, so first on the back there are these two screws which hold in this uh, support which seems to support this uh, central member. So I'm going to unscrew those.
So there's one screw. Six forty. Two fifty three. Bag. And the other one. I think it's probably going to be the same thing. 640. Which, if I could get my hands working properly, Rob's hands are not working properly. There we go, 640. And. Uh, 254, so the same size. Okay, and now I should be able to just remove this somehow. Let's see. Hmm. It seems quite difficult. I wonder why that is. Ah, because there is another screw holding it in. So, let's remove that screw as well. Oops. Ah, oh, there was a washer. That came out from somewhere. Okay, so there's another screw. It is also 640. And it is also about 0.25. Now we lift it and we see that um, we have the support and two washers. Uh, apparently no third washer. Nope. Okay, so, and I think those two washers uh, were from here. Okay, so. Um, oh, there are three washers. Okay, my bad. So there must be one washer per screw. Let's uh, measure the outer diameter, 0.376, and the thickness is 0 0.012. So we have three washers and a support. The support went underneath somehow. Yeah, it somehow went underneath, and it's sort of hooked under here. So that'll be uh, an interesting puzzle to figure out when we put it back together. Okay, so that's one end of the shaft. Uh, that's the middle of the shaft. Now, one end of the shaft appears to be just um, placed into this hole. The doesn't look like there's a screw or anything over there. So we should just be able to lift this out at least a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got, uh, as we saw before, an adjustment screw and a bolt with um, another nut inside. So let's go ahead and take the adjustment screw out. Um, oh, yeah, of the central one. Oops, I moved the camera. You know, I really don't need to um, remove that adjustment screw, I don't think. Um, if I can just loosen the nut with something, boy, that's really hard to get into. See that I can get in there. Huh. Maybe with uh, needle nose pliers I can try it. Or. Should I remove this side? Yeah, 
I've got to remove the central shaft, definitely. Okay, so um, let's see what else we can uh, try to remove. Hmm. There's, there's this thing, which I don't know what that what purpose that serves. It doesn't seem to lock or anything. Well, maybe it just makes it harder to turn. I don't know. Um, let's see. Okay, there's an arm here. Well, let's just attempt to turn this side. The problem with doing that is that it is... I don't have a lot of... Uh, yeah, I just don't have a lot of torque. Yeah, that's not going to be a good idea. Um, I have to, I have to um, remove the nut somehow. So, all right. So it's coming up on 47 minutes or so, um, minus the editing time. So maybe about 40 minutes. Uh, so we'll end it here. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to try to figure out what I can do to remove. Um, this nut, uh, and we'll be back uh, later. Bye.